Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to can beautify your Vapor web apps using Skeleton. Often you want to prototype a web app, but you might not be an amazing designer able to whip up some amazing looking HTML and CSS from scratch. In that case, it's handy to have a CSS boilerplate library like Bootstrap, Foundation, or Skeleton. These libraries are designed to give you some basic CSS looks fairly decent, and even more important, work responsively, usually by using some kind of grid system. The idea is you can use these libraries to prototype your app and have something that doesn't make you want to hurl, and then your designer can go and customize it afterwards. In this screencast, we're going to look at one particular CSS boilerplate library called Skeleton. I like Skeleton because it's simple, it's quick to learn, it looks fairly decent, and it has a nice grid system. Even if you don't want to use Skeleton in your apps, you still might find this screencast useful because I show you how you can include public files into your Vapor apps. I have a simple Vapor app here that has a model object and is configured to use a database. Notice that I'm getting a warning on the line that initializes my droplet here. This is because the convenience initializer I was using is now deprecated. Let's fix this by using the standard initializer and configuring the provider and preparations ourselves. Build and run and make sure that all is okay by going to slash acronyms. All right, there's the test data that I put in earlier. Now I'm gonna create a new file called tilcontroller.swift and I'll regenerate the Xcode project. I'll open up tilcontroller.swift and I'll create a new method to register its routes. For now, it will contain just a single entry. If we perform a get at the TIL path, it will call the index handler. Let's write that index handler next. It'll take a request it can throw and it returns a response representable. To quickly try this out, for now, I'll just return all of the acronyms as JSON. Next, I'll open main.swift, create an instance of my controller and call the add routes method. If I build and run, I can go to slash TIL to see the list of acronyms. Now that I know we have a working route, let's pretty this up a bit by using Skeleton. To get Skeleton, we can simply go to getskeleton.com. Before I download it though, let me give you a quick overview of how it works. The first thing to point out is that it comes with this handy grid system. The basic idea is Skeleton splits up the page into 12 columns, and whenever you want something to be in a particular column, you just surround it by a div tag that specifies the number of columns that you want. Every time you want a new row, you can use the row class, and you need to put the entire page in a container. Next, it comes with some basic typography to make your pages look pretty decent. It uses a special web font called Railway served by Google. It also has some default styling for buttons. Basically, you can apply the button class or use the button tag or an input tag of type submit or an input tag of type button, and it will be applied automatically. You can also use blue primary buttons by applying the button primary class. There's also some nice default styling for forms. It's all built in, except do notice that there's a u-full-width tag that you can use to make an element fill up the entire width of its container. Finally, there's a few other things like list styling, code styling, tables, and media queries. But all in all, it's pretty simple. All right, let's go back to the top and click download. Then I'll find the CSS files I just download and copy them into the public slash styles directory of my Vapor app. In this directory, they will automatically be served by Vapor. Basically, the way Vapor works is when you try to access a URL, it'll first search to see if you've registered a matching route. But if it can't find one, then it'll look in the public directory to see if there's anything that will match there instead. Now the app is still running, so I can verify this by browsing to slash style slash skeleton.css, and nice, there's my file. Now that we have skeleton available, let's update our base template to use it. I'll open base.leaf and add style sheets to the head section. I'll also import the railway font that it requires. Let me turn on syntax highlighting real quick, and then I'll add a container for the page I'll add the first row and I'll make it full width. Inside, I'll put a header for the web app. Next, let's create a new page called index.leaf, which we'll use to display our list of acronyms. We'll extend the base template, turn on syntax highlighting, and export the body. On this page, we're going to assume we're passed an array of acronym objects and a parameter called acronyms. So first, we'll loop through the list of acronyms and create a row for each. 
Then we'll create a three wide column and put the short version of the acronym. Again, we're assuming that the objects in the array contain a property called short. Then we'll create a six wide column and put in the long version of the acronym. And finally, we'll create a three wide column and it'll, that'll just be a placeholder for now. This all sums up to 12 columns, which is what Skeleton expects, so we're all good. Now we just need to update our controller to serve this template. So we'll open tlcontroller.swift. I'll delete the placeholder JSON that I was returning earlier. Remember that the template is assuming that we're passing a dictionary of acronyms and a parameter called acronyms. So let's get all of the acronyms in the database and then return a node that contains the acronyms. Note that this works because our acronym model already conforms to node representable. So our acronym is automatically being converted into that node class automatically here. Finally, we call drop.view.make saying we want to serve the index template and passing in our parameters. If I build and run, nice. We see a nice looking list of acronyms styled with skeleton. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to beautify your Vapor web apps using Skeleton. You can apply the techniques that we've learned today using any CSS boilerplate library you choose, or even if you want to write your own HTML and CSS. You've learned a lot about Vapor at this point, and you're probably eager to take everything you've learned and put it together to create a complete web app. And that's the focus of my next screencast. I hope that you enjoy Skeleton as much as I do, and you can use it to give your project some solid bones. I'm out.